Hello, I'm Charles and welcome to my Hebridean Way adventure. 156 miles of beaches, moorland and amazing scenery. The first thing I had to do was to get to the Outer Hebrides. And for me, that meant an exhilarating flight from Glasgow to the island of Barra. Where the plane landed on the actual beach. Landed. That was one of the best flights of my life. I mean, the adventure begins. Welcome to the Outer Hebrides, and in particular, the island of Vatasay, which is one of the most southern islands and also the southernmost uh, start of the Hebridean Way. And that is the trail that I'm doing this time. So I landed on the island of Barra this afternoon after a fantastic flight. I got a taxi down to Castle Bay, filled up with uh, gas, because I obviously couldn't take it gas it was it on the plane. And uh, now I'm uh, walking down to the start of the trail at Vatisay. So this is an absolutely beautiful spot, lovely place to pitch the tent. And uh, there's the most wonderful golden sandy beach. The Hebrides are famous for the white sandy beaches, clear blue sea, beautiful scenery. It's living up to that from, from the get go. If it stays like this, this is going to be an amazing trip. I cannot I really find the words to express what a beautiful place this is. Absolutely gorgeous. And uh, do you see, I've got the place the beach completely to myself. Uh, what a, a fantastic place to start a, a, a trail up the length of the Outer Hebrides. But if the Hebridean Way carries on like it started, <laughs> it's going to be good. After months and months of planning, I'm at the start of the Hebridean Way. And this thing has been uh, up to now on my computer screen, you know, I've been planning this trip from, for months and months and it's been like a kind of a virtual thing. So to actually be here in front of this iconic sign at the start of the trail uh, feels really wonderful. Right, here we are. First steps on the Hebridean Way. Look at that! <laughs> no, it's not the Caribbean or Barbados, it's the blooming outer Hebrides. And that, look at that white sand, pale sea, fantastic isn't it? Absolutely amazing, wonderful <laughs> and uh, even best because it's like a little teaser taste of what's to come. Can you tell I'm a bit excited? Today's walk, the first day of the trail, um, features actually the highest uh, uh, climb of the, of the trail as well so it's good to get that out of the way. So if there's a nice cool breeze that could be uh, just right for that part of it. Just hoping that uh, the cloud isn't too low so we get some views when we get up higher. So uh, this morning's walk, um, I'm going to retrace my steps from uh, the walk uh, to get here yesterday a little bit. So uh, there's a lovely little lane that meanders its way around the coast of Vatasay, which is the island we're on at the moment. And then uh, we had a causeway across the island of Barra. And I'm going to desperately try to avoid going too fast, too soon, too heavy, which is the usual mistake. You know, you're all excited at the start of the trail, buzzing with energy. But of course the pack's that bit heavy, got lots of gas, uh, quite a lot of food and things like that on board so it's relatively heavy and also a bit of water because uh, don't pass too many water sources today. So the pack's quite heavy so <laughs> be very tempting to go a bit crazy and uh, attack today and do too many miles and kind of burn out. So I'm going to deliberately pace myself, take a few breaks, just enjoy it and sort of build, build up to the rest of the trail. 
Along the way, I passed the remains of a Catalina flying boat that had crashed here in 1944, killing three of the nine crew. And uh, that's uh, Barra Island, and the hill just capped in mist is the one I'm going around later on. Now, apparently back in the day, uh, the island of Atasay was known for the quality of its uh, beef herds and cows, and uh, but unfortunately there was a 200 metre stretch of water between the island and Barra, and so every year they had to basically swim the cattle across uh, this little gap to get them to market, until one year uh, the prize bull drowned on the crossing, and that created a big uh, stink and fuffle and eventually a uh, causeway was built and you can see the quarry there where they dug out the rock to create this uh, causeway which is what I'm going to walk over now. The first of many causeways on the trail. This one's quite short and looming above it somewhat ominously is the hill that I'm going to have to walk up next. So after a few miles of a road walking, frequently stopping off the road for cars and cyclists, uh, I'm really pleased to be branching off the road now and heading up on a path into the hills. That's the good news. Bad news is it looks a bit steep. Just up from the road are the remains of ancient buildings, some dating from the Neolithic period. This is a pretty amazing place. As the uh, ruins of a roundhouse some t a couple of thousand years ago. You know, we hardy backpacking, hiking type people like to think that we're roughy tufty people getting out into the wild. <laughs> These people living here, that was tough. Okay, um, I can see, uh, having said that, having lingered to pay due respect to the people who used to live here, all that time ago, up on the skyline, there's a couple of posts, and from now on, we're going to be following those posts around the shoulder of this here hill. So, as a fully paid up member of the grumpy old git club, I'm not usually one for uh, enjoying uphill paths of a path. Usually I'm cussing and mumbling under my breath. But, but, in a strange twist of fate, I'm actually enjoying this section of uphill. I know, worrying. Uh, why? Well, uh, the views are opening up. Every step I take, there's a bigger view of the, the islands opening up, which is Fantastic, absolutely fantastic. Plus also, this path, although there are posts like this every few hundred metres, uh, it's not hugely well trodden. You can kind of just about make out a slight trace of a path from time to time, but it's not a big uh, overwalked uh, trail. And I really enjoy that, I really appreciate that. It reminds me a bit of some of the sections of the Cape Wrath Trail and Sky Trail where there isn't just a big motorway that's been walked by tens of thousands of people. Uh, so it's a really pleasant uh, route up to the shoulder, he said. I might, I reserve the right to change my mind after another mile or two of this stuff, but right now I'm quite enjoying this. News flash. Charles waxes lyrical about slogging up a steep hill. Dementia is setting in early. You know, I was saying earlier on about enjoying the climb. Scratch that. I was talking rubbish. I was, I was delusional, demented. Hopefully, I'm nearly at the top of the climbing for this section anyway. I wanted to show, just to show you the 
the view behind me though. I keep stopping to check it out. Look at that. It's a bit distracting, it's behind me. Every few, I want to keep just stopping. Oh, look at the view. I've just come over the crest of the hill, got that hill out of the way. And as I came over the top, this is the view that's uh, greeting me here. Lovely rocky coast, and I guess that's America's that way, just Atlantic. And uh, there's a little a bit of sandy coves just peeking around the corner there as well. So, uh, got a lovely downhill stretch now towards the coast. Now, um, in other news, I, I also managed to check the weather forecast. Hmm. Um, and basically, there's heavy rain on its way. Surprise, surprise, it is the Outer Hebrides after all. And that's going to arrive early evening and last through the night. And uh, tomorrow is going to be showery, damp as well. So I've got a decision to make. Um, I'm going to get down and uh, there are some campsites down on the coast at, at Borv, just around the corner. So I can stop there, um, see out the rainy night. And that leaves me with uh, the uh, section across to Ardmore where the ferry goes uh, to leave for tomorrow morning. Uh, when hopefully the weather won't be quite so bad. I could try that section over the hills to Ardmore uh, this afternoon. But if it's going to be a risk of heavy rain, might not be so fun. And I don't know uh, a sure place to wild camp there either. So the plan is to get down, enjoy this section and the views. And if there's still a phone signal when I get to the bottom, check the updates on the weather and look at the campsites and make a decision. But I've got bags of time, so I think I'm, I'm quite tempted just to make today a short one with this climb and uh, save the uh, boggy stuff for tomorrow when it's not going to be quite so wet underfoot. So that's the slope that I came down and since I got to the bottom you kind of work your way through sort of fairly bumpy boulder strewn uh, land. It's quite sort of up and down twisty turny picking your way along and there are occasionally posts like that one in the distance and this one in front of me. Oh look that's tempting isn't it? <laughs> so the guidebook one of them says this could be a good spot to wild camp and they're not wrong. Oh, it's, it's beautiful, smooth grass, short grass, close to crop with a fantastic view across uh, the bay there. Oh, that is seriously tempting. Now there's no uh, stream or source of fresh water, but just across the way is a lake that looks like it would be a uh, fresh water. So we could possibly filter that. That is seriously tempting, but no. I will resist that and we're going to head up to the road and follow that around the bay. So in the dunes uh, at the top of the beach now, in fact, we're descending to sea level right now and along the beautiful golden sand. Look at it. <laughs> oh, this is absolutely excellent. My legs don't agree though. Uh, that climb and, and actually even more the descent rather than the climb. Uh, Suddenly took it out of them. They're like jelly now. Absolutely useless. So not too much energy left. Need to get some more food and blood sugar going, I think, before we do much more. Right, there's got to be a bridge somewhere. Where's the bridge? Do we kind of scramble across somewhere around here where the fence crosses? What gives? Or some rocks. That might help. Uh, then again, no. I think it might be just a case of go for it and uh, dry out the feet later on. So let's find a bit that doesn't look too wet and just splash our way across, I guess. Really? Really? What happened to the signs? <laughs> hey, you're going to get a rare glimpse of my lower leg now. Uh, okay, uh, it's just a case of go for it, so here goes. Yeah. 
Right, so that's me pitched up in Borf. Quite a short day, only five or six hours walking, but uh, quite hard work. And uh, I'm playing the long game, giving my body and in particular my legs uh, time to break themselves in. I think if I'd uh, tried to do the next section, I could have done it fine, but I would have been killed and uh, the next couple of days I would have been totally burnt out. So I think by having a sensible day today, it's going to set me up well for the next few days, hopefully. And also I'm looking on the rain radar. It's coming in. It's only a matter of time now before the rain starts. So it's good to have the tent pitch set up uh, nicely, sorted out with some shelter for the rest of the afternoon and evening. Well, I pitched the tent, had my tea and everything's looking good. But I just want to let you hear the sound of the rain storm that's just hit the tent. Not sure if it's coming through okay, but it is so heavy. I'm so glad I'm not pitched up on top of the mountain now. <laughs> it's definitely the right call. Good morning, day two, and what do you know? It's raining! <laughs> but the good news is that this is uh, the last the only day of rain really for a while. Hopefully it's going to be better tomorrow. Uh, let's just see, shall we? It's going to be pretty soggy and misty up top. Even though it's miserable weather, the scenery is really beautiful. He said, desperately trying to lift his spirits. Oh well. Watcher. <laughs> Look at this. <laughs> absolutely soaking uh, it's gonna be pretty miserable then and the cloud is just hovering a couple hundred feet up uh, on the side of the hills in front of me so not too alluring but uh, I reached a point which um, is noticeable because uh, the sign posted is a um, good spot for seeing famous birds of prey in particular golden eagles I'm not sure if I was a golden eagle that I'd be doing much flying today but I'll keep my eye out anyway you never know dear you never know oh, oh hello bit of uphill now that's my path up wending up into the hills that's better isn't it this is my path which is actually a stream Splish, splash, splish, splash. Off we go. As I continued up the trail, the wind and the rain and no cloud shrouded the path. I just had to keep my head down and follow the clear path. This section of the path has got some uh, sort of matting laid on top of it to stop erosion and things, which is great. But there are places like here that shows where it's sort of curled up and it's very stiffness and that is a um, fantastic trip hazard. Hopefully I won't end up tripping on anything like that, but it's uh, a bit dodgy, so uh, it probably was fantastic when it was just laid down, but now it's disintegrating, it's a bit of a risk. Haha! <laughs> Good morning! What fun! <laughs> what views! I think I'm just about... Uh, level with the bottom of the clouds now but more interestingly <laughs> so the path carries on beyond that post but between me and the post is uh, a raging sort of flooded stream thing don't know how deep it is so we're just going to go for it uh, could get very wet let's see how it goes huh <laughs> one two three ah, oh. Oh, it wasn't too bad. I've long since given up trying to keep the feet too dry. And that's the great thing with tra wearing trail runners. 
Um, okay, they, they get your feet wet, but also they dry out quickly. That's the idea anyway. Right, I'm following the posts to make navigation really easy. And the next one's just on the skyline. Off we go. Another water splash, and then we've got a track. <laughs> Here we go, three, two, one. And another one. Oh. <laughs> but look, a nice grassy track, woohoo. Right, not a moment too soon. I've reached the ferry terminal at Barra. Hopefully the cake shop is open. Right, good news and bad news. Good news, I got to the ferry port and there's a cake shop. Very good news. Bad news is it's 11.37 and the next sailing's at 15.45. So I've got a wait of three or four hours in a cake shop. Hmm. Right, so here we are, the ferry terminal at Barra and the ferry that's going to take me to Ariske just arrived and is waiting for the return trip and people are slowly starting to arrive in drips and drabs in their cars and bikes and stuff. Well, it stopped raining for a little bit and there's a bit of warmth trying to peek through but I can see another bank of rain about to arrive. It's devastating news that when I got here, in, with every intention of spending two hours stuffing my face with cake, and drinking nice coffee, the place had to shut down, burst pipe, absolutely gutted. So uh, the vending machine wasn't quite as nice, but at least the waiting room is warm and dry and sheltered. Uh, by the time I get to Eriske, it's going to be about 4.30, I've got enough time to quickly stop off at the shop, perhaps get a few treats for tonight, and then I've got a five or so mile walk to a campsite where apparently there's a space, so that's good. So the rest of the day is taken care of and the forecast says that for the next few days, dare I say into the next week, it's going to stay pleasantly warm and dry. Dare we hope, because I've certainly had a fortnight's worth of rain and <laughs> rubbish weather already in the last two days. And it was definitely, definitely the right thing to stop where I did last night because um, I was wondering as I was walking up the path this morning, oh, if I'd carried on, was there an amazing spot to pitch that I missed out on? But, you know, there was nothing that I could see. It was all very wet as well anyway. So, uh, and even the, the road down towards the ferry terminal, I couldn't really see any particularly good spots. So, although you could stick a tent in just about at the ferry terminal, I didn't miss out on anything. And it was definitely the right thing to stop when I did. If I was doing the trail again, I would plan to make that first day kind of a half day warm up day and then uh, hit the trail full time the next day like I've done. Eventually we embarked on the ferry and began the smooth crossing to Eriske. Well that's better. <laughs> Uh, that ferry and the weight and like, uh, the noise and the cars and everything. It's nice to get back to walking and what's more, I'm on a beach. First time on the trail. And that sea, it's a beautiful pale green blue colour. Happy, happy times. You can take the road from the ferry port to get into our escape, but there's not much difference in terms of distance. And I wanted to get away from the 
cars and the bikes and everything, so opted for the beach route instead. I think it's paid off. Oh, this is it. This is what I was expecting from the Hebridean Way. Hey, brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Look at the views and the light. Gorgeous beach. Absolutely beautiful and amazing. I'll tell you what, Patrick Dickinson wouldn't be impressed. <laughs> I'm walking past a pub. Not a very common occurrence on a trail, but I haven't got time for that. I haven't got time for that. I've got places to go, people to see. Very tempting now, I must say. Right, things are looking up. I just stopped off at the Eriske community shop, restocked with a few bits and pieces for the next day or two. And more importantly, they serve coffee. Warm coffee. Cheers. The rain's back. Shock horror. The rest of today's walking is pretty straightforward. Road walking uh, down to the causeway, which will mark the end of my brief visit to Eriske. So hello, goodbye. And then we're on South Uist, heading to the campsite. Ah, it's, it's a bit more breezy now, and the rain is uh, as strong as ever. But I've got my coffee, so everything's fine. Look at me, <laughs> soaking wet. <laughs> but with a big grin, smile on my face, I've been chuckling to myself for the last 10 minutes. And uh, it might be just deranged behavior after a couple of days on the trail, I'm, I'm starting to lose it. But actually it's not, it's just that I'm actually absolutely loving this. I know, <laughs> it's a bit breezy. Uh, the rain's coming sort of diagonally at my face. But this is the causeway. I've been walking along and uh, the other way, this is the view where I'm heading. And it's absolutely brilliant. <laughs> uh, it's wild, it's exhilarating, it's a hell of an adventure. So, uh, don't mind saying, I'm, I'm quite glad I'm here at home. You tell people what you're doing, and uh, they and they they seem to split into two groups. Oh, here comes a car! So half people say, "Oh, you lucky thing! That sounds amazing." Yeah, <laughs> and the other half go, "Oh, you must be mad! You're bonkers! You're crazy!" Blah blah blah. There may be some truth in that, but. It is amazing. I don't think I'm mad. This is beautiful scenery. Wild, rugged, but still beautiful. And although it's windy, and although it's rainy, and I've still got two or three miles left to walk this evening, I'm absolutely loving it. So the sign says, welcome to South Uist. According to my calculations, that's island number four. I was happy to see the campsite emerging out of the rain. I pitched up quickly and settled down, with views across to the northern end of Barra.